Hi, my name's Anne-Marie Colhain. I'm from Tidelines. Today I'm going to talk about three online events that we ran during our pilot year. The first was about sea temperatures and sea temperature changes. The second was part of a bigger project which was um, a mass reading of a book by Rachel Carson called The Sea Around Us, which had a follow-up online event and two very small, socially distanced live events. And the third is high water, which marked the highest tide of the year in our estuary and brought together a group of pe people from around the world to mark the high tide. Our first event on sea temperatures took place in July 2020. During lockdown, many more people were spending time in the local area by our estuary and on the coast and we noticed that many more people were swimming in coastal waters. We got increasingly curious about how sea temperatures are changing and how this is impacting on our estuary and coastline. While also tracking the trends over the last 10 years, we wanted to invite local people into a conversation with scientists to explore what these changes in temperature might mean for our coasts and the marine organisms that live here and the biodiversity in general. We invited two scientists to come to an online conversation event and talk to members of the public about sea temperature change. One of these was Nova Mierskowska from the Marine Biology Association and the other was Jonathan Tinker from the Met Office, Hadley Centre in Exeter. Both study sea temperature change and its impacts. Our event took place in the early evening and we wanted to limit numbers to under 10 people. We wanted to create an intimate space where people felt confident to speak to scientists because sometimes we find that there's a gap between the public and public knowledge and public confidence in their knowledge and scientists and how they communicate with the public. So we wanted to create a welcoming safe space online. This is quite early in the year in terms of lockdown and we were less experienced with using Zoom. We managed to get good attendance. We had eight members of the public attending and the two speakers and ourselves facilitating with some support from Kate Baker at the University of Exeter and Tom Powell who is an academic at the University of Exeter and is on our advisory board. The event ran over one hour and 15 minutes started with a brief talk by the two main speakers and then they answered individual questions. We then had breakout groups where people fell into smaller groups to discuss some of the issues that had been raised. We then came back together and there was an opportunity for the academics to ask the community members a question, allowing information to flow both from the scientists to the community and back again to the scientists. We had very positive feedback about this event. 78.8% of people said the event had increased their understanding of the impacts of changing sea temperatures. People enjoyed the fact that there was a collegiate group discussion atmosphere. It was nice and intimate. It worked well, said somebody, and we didn't have to travel anywhere. It was relaxed and informal. And it was great to speak to the experts and hear first-hand experiences. Somebody particularly remarked on the mix of slides and discussion and the fact that we introduced poetry and quotes as a way to begin and end the meeting. We asked people what could we have done better. Perhaps more people. I think people weren't used to being in a small Zoom group and perhaps only one speaker so that questions could be more targeted. People also said that they would have liked to have had better introductions between the other participants as well as knowing who the speakers were. Follow on reflections from participants were that some participants had already been in touch with each other to help on projects and to find out data. 100% of participants would appreciate the opportunity for a follow on. The value of these kind of events for citizens and researchers is a great opportunity for discussion between professionals and citizens and it demystifies academic research and encourages people to get further involved. 
that it was local and topical and that was a way as learning as a citizen how to understand the situation and work out how you might be part of the solution. 100% of participants felt motivated to be part of Tidelines going forward. Our key learning from the event was that we perhaps overloaded the event having two speakers who had different perspectives on sea temperature and we would have been fine with one. But what we tried to do by doing that was to introduce a very localised perspective through Nova's work on creatures and biodiversity in the Devon coasts and to bring that together with John's approach which is more about tidal systems and sea temperature change happening in the coasts of the UK. So we wanted to give a very local perspective and a sense of the bigger systems we are part of. Perhaps that was a little bit too ambitious for our first event. We also were a training ground for one of the speakers as this was his first public event. We were very happy to be in that position and to support him to have the confidence to meet a public in such an intimate way and we have stayed engaged with John Tinker since then and he is very supportive of our work. The Zoom event also provided a, an opportunity for a scientist to step into the public realm. The second event I'm going to talk about is the online reading group which took place after people had read the book The Sea Around Us by Rachel Carson. We invited researchers and scientists from the Marine Biology Association and the University of Exeter to take part in these conversations and respond to questions. The online event had limited numbers and included small breakout sessions where people got the chance to book, discuss the book in small groups with a scientist in each group. The events were greatly enjoyed by those who responded to our questionnaire. We had six responses. People really enjoyed the chance to have a direct contact with a scientist. 83% of the attendees had come because they could meet a, li a scientist live and they wanted to understand more about the place that they lived. People really enjoyed having an icebreaker at the beginning where they were asked to discuss a memorable image from the book with the rest of the group. And people really enjoyed being able to ask professional academic questions and discuss issues in real time. People thought there were good in-depth discussions and they enjoyed the fact it was well organised and informal. One person really enjoyed the breakout groups and enjoyed listening to everyone's different take on the book and the subject. People wanted to have more of the events and perhaps more structured questions or talking points. And one respondent said they would value any opportunity that could arise to ask questions directly to research scientists. When we asked them what is the value of these kind of events for citizens and researchers, one person said it's hugely valuable to talk to researchers, it just doesn't happen otherwise. If researchers are available then it's usually in a lecture talk format which isn't so engaging. Just the opportunity to have these multidisciplinary conversations between citizens and local researchers is valuable. And 100% said they would like to be part of Tidelines events in the future. Before I speak about the third event, I wanted to summarise how these two events helped us as part of our pilot year. Firstly, there was a huge learning curve, I think for everyone, using Zoom during 2020. And we definitely felt by the second event we were more confident in our approach and more relaxed, which made for a really accessible and convivial event. The events online also enabled us to fulfil some of our objectives for the year, which was to start off this process of bringing scientists and community or citizens closer together and to test this and to see how we could create situations where this could happen informally and with a real exchange of information. We feel that this was very successful in our online events. And we also started to build relationships with different researchers and research organisations and deepen connections 
with those, for example, with the University of Exeter, with the Marine Biological Association and with the Met Office. It also enabled us to have a continuous flow of activity throughout the year when very little was happening live. The final event I want to mention is our high water event, which happened outside the peri period of us working with the SEU, but still relates to the experience we gained through our pilot year. And this is high water, which happened on March the 30th, 2021. And this time was a 12 and a half hour online Zoom with 50 participant contributors from around the world and an audience of 200 people registered on Eventbrite. Without the first two events, I don't think we would have had the confidence to have put together such an ambitious programme. And we worked in partnership with Art.Earth, an arts and ecology network, also based in Devon. This event included inputs from scientists, artists, poets, storytellers and musicians, and other people working with the tidal environment, telling and sharing tidal stories, and was based around the tide pattern here in the ex estuary. So the event started with our high tide at 8.45 and finished just after our high tide at 10 p.m. Basing the structure for high water around the tide gave the event its own momentum and meant that people could tune in from live feeds and give a really exciting sense of the movement of the water around the world. I'm just going to share some of the participant feedback that we had unprompted after the event. Thank you Art.Earth and Tidelines and everyone else who generously put together quite an extraordinary event. I really enjoyed every single presentation that I saw and felt the whole atmosphere was relaxed and good. That's Inez from Portugal. From John in the ex estuary, I thought the organisation was excellent and you managed to just get the right tone. I liked the formal, informal nature of the occasion. The variety and breadth of contributions was really powerful. And I liked that slots were kept to 10 minutes or so, which meant that things were succinct and the pace kept moving. There was something very exciting about it being a live event. I'm looking forward to next year. I would love to be involved again. And a good child. It was the first time I've contributed to a seminar and it could not have gone better for me. I learned so much from everyone else and I found it very positive and worthwhile. Chris Rustin, it's hard to pick out what I enjoyed most as the whole day was so interesting. I had short breaks but kept wanting to get back in case I was missing anything. It's been very useful to make some new connections and to have been introduced to new projects. I particularly valued the crossover between arts and sciences. Linda Ward from Plymouth University, Thank you very much for including me in your event to raise awareness of climate change and rising sea levels. The conversation and spirit of the event had this amazing can-do attitude and I loved experiencing the richness of the artistry and deep scientific knowledge of your contributors. From Vikram Iyengar in the Bay of Bengal, it was really wonderful to be, feel part of a larger global creative community imagining such a range of ideas. It was very hopeful and inspiring. We're delighted with the feedback from High Water and we've learnt so much from this unique experience of a day-long Zoom. Who would have thought that we'd have been doing this one year ago? Our initial proposal for Tidelines was in the pilot year to run monthly live participatory events out in the estuary and in the local landscape. Obviously we've had to really adapt our strategies and our methodology. And we're very grateful for the support from the SEU for enabling us to experiment with the online form. We'll be running a high water event in 2022 and we already have interest from the University of Exeter and the Royal Albert Memorial Museum in Exeter. High water really demonstrated to us what the possibilities of Zoom are in terms of creative connection, sharing knowledge and developing a sense of community, all things that are incredibly important to us. Finally, we wanted to thank Kate Baker, Tom Powell and Lindsay Anderson from the University of Exeter, Richard Paval from Art.Earth and our online facilitators from the Marine Biological Association, the Met Office and the University of Exeter. Thanks for listening.
We're going to end with a short extract from a live piece of music performed as part of High Water by Hugh Nankerville and Pete Moser. <laughs>